Hello, I'm your host, Jodie Minto, and welcome to my podcast, Online Store Success. My mission is to help other emerging entrepreneurs crack the code for e-commerce success for a life of uncapped income, flexibility, and fun. I'm an award-winning seven-figure e-commerce fashion founder, a certified digital marketer, and business and life coach. I'm also a Prosecco-loving wife, mother of two teens, a Facebook ads nerd, and a crazy animal lover. I've been in business for over 20 years now, and during that time, I've helped hundreds of others start and scale their online e-commerce stores through my coaching programs. I love all things business and know firsthand how rewarding it is to have a career on your own terms, turning a passion into a profitable business and the freedom and flexibility that comes with it. Each week, I'm going to share with you the ups and downs of this crazy e-commerce journey that we call life and help you start that business of your dreams or help scale your existing online store. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to today's episode of Online Store Success with me, your host, Jody Minto. Today we're chatting about winning websites and what that actually is, what's the formula for it and how to get one if you don't already have one. This builds on the last two episodes we've chatted about building your iconic brand and then the episode before that where we talked about getting really clear on your ideal customer and where you fit within the broader market because these are all elements of building a solid foundation for your business whether this is an e-commerce business or or a service-based business, knowing these things and laying these solid foundations will serve you in the long run when it comes to implementing your marketing, your Facebook ads, what to post on social media, what to send out in that email uh, each week. So it's really, really important we start sometimes at the beginning because I know I'm often just jump straight to the paid ads, but if we don't have the other elements of our business um, in order, those ads aren't going to do anything. Facebook ads will send people to our website and then they're going to click off and not buy anything. And we do not want that. So that's why today we are building on what we've already talked about the past two weeks. Go back and listen to those if you haven't already. And we are chatting about your website. So what exactly is a winning website? A winning website is, whether you're on Shopify or Wix or WooCommerce or whatever you happen to be, it's a website that's built to convert as many website visitors into customers as possible. And hopefully on autopilot, while you sleep, there's nothing better than waking up to those Shopify notifications saying you've made a number of sales while you've been snoozing. So your website is the equivalent of a bricks and mortar shop front. And I have to often remind my clients and my students about this because with our websites, we are offer, often in the back end of it. We are looking inside of it. We're loading products. We're writing product descriptions. We're checking inventory. We are shipping orders. We're not that often looking at it from the public point of view, the outside version of our website. And that outside version, that public version of your website is all customers have to go off to decide whether or not your business or your products are right for them and they're trust you, they're confident to go ahead and make a sale. So we need to consider our website as the equivalent of having a a physical store down in your local high street or shopping mall. When you walk past, and even think about your own shopping experiences, when you walk past, maybe you're on holidays, just imagine this for a moment, you're on holidays and you're walking down a street full of shops for the very first time and you're looking to see if there's any that might pique your interest. If you were to come across a store that didn't have any kind of signage, the windows displays looked messy or not appealing, if there were boxes stacked in front of the doorway, there was cobwebs hanging around inside and outside the store, would you feel attracted to walk into that store and have a look? I know I wouldn't. And then if you have a store next to it that then is, you know, beautifully painted and merchandised and well lit and there's a smiling sales assistant there ready to help you when you walk in, you would be very much more likely to go into that store. And we need to think about our websites in the same vein because where there is a lot more online stores than there is bricks and mortar shops. At the, and it's much easier for people to find that you they're not location dependent. You, anyone in any part of the world can find us and decide whether or not they want to shop with us. So we need to think about how our website is presented. Does it need a fresh coat of paint? Is there trip hazards 
in other words, pop-ups that keep coming up the minute you land on your site, asking you know for people's email addresses so that you get 10% off the first purchase, etc. Are there is it clunky to navigate? Is it is it hard for people to find what it is that they're looking for? We need to think about the experience that customers have when they land on our website, the same as if they were going into a physical store. Is it a good first impression? Is the store attractive and appealing? Is there someone there to help them, whether that is a smiling shop assistant or a helpful FAQs page on your website or a live chat? We need to think about our online stores as if they were a physical store and enhance the customer's experience as much as possible. So how do we actually do that? The very first thing we have to do is to have a really strong home page. That is more often than not the page that people land on, whether they've Google searched you or come from a paid ad or a social media account, it's the home page. And we need to be making that super, super appealing, attractive, and clear as to what it is that you sell and who it is that you serve, because that is our prime real estate. That's the equivalent of the shop front and the window display and the big sign. Or if you're selling real estate, it's the equivalent of the street appeal. What is the street appeal of your website? We need to make sure above the fold is particularly obvious and clear what it is that you sell and who it is that you serve ideally. So when I say above the fold, that is without someone having to scroll down further the page. So the very first place that they land, everything they need to know is above the fold. This might be those hello bars that says, for example, we are your one-stop shop for all things resort wear. We ship internationally. Um, we have 30 day returns, blah, 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 blah. And then underneath that, you would have a banner that would be highlighting either, either a new product range or a collection or your best sellers and make it really, really obvious as to what it is that you do. You do not want to have a banner on your website, on the homepage especially, that is a lifestyle shot or a stock image showing something that isn't actually what you sell. And I know this sounds it might sound obvious, but I actually see it a lot where they might sell one thing, but then they've got an image of, say, like a mother and child uh, instead they found on the internet as their banner. It's like, well, where are the products that you sell? I can't actually see them, especially above the fold. If you want images like that, use those in blog posts and things like that on your page, but not for the above the fold or anywhere on your homepage. We want to be highlighting your products. So your homepage needs to be really, really strong. And then it needs to be set up in a way that it invites people to click through to another part of your website to a collection to such as uh, new arrivals, bestsellers, whatever it happens to be, your best-selling categories. And then we also want to have other places where they might click through. Maybe it's around shipping information. Maybe it's around those FAQs in regards to your size guides or your returns policy or your shipping's policy. What happens if it doesn't fit? Can they return it? Those different types of questions that customers might have before they go ahead and make a purchase from you. So our homepage is the most important part of our real estate online. We need to make sure that's super, super strong because it's from that page that we make our first impression and a customer decides whether or not they want to click through to look at something else. So after that, we need to have lots and lots of social proof scattered around your website because social proof in customer reviews as Badges such as as seen in gives customers confidence that you are a real life business. You're not going to run away with their money and you can be trusted. Social proof will enhance and increase your conversion rate on your website so much that without it, you're doing yourself a disservice. So think about how you can get social proof elements scattered throughout your entire site, not just on the home page, but also on your product pages, your collection pages, your about pages. Any way that you can plonk it on your site, uh, it will serve you and help build that know, like, and trust with your customers. Something else that's crucial to any winning website is having easy navigation. People need to be able to figure out where things are easily in the least amount of clicks as possible. So think about your menu bar. 
Is it one of those drop-down mega menus that is super, super crowded, really hard to filter through things? And sometimes I know when I've tried using them, you you hover on one and you try to click on it and then 20 other sub-menus come up underneath it and it's really hard to actually click on where you want to go. So think about what your navigation looks like, your menu, and have a try on both a mobile as well as a desktop, as well as a a laptop, because I know I use a iMac on my desk, which is this huge, big stretched out screen. And then if I look on my laptop, it looks different again. So it's really, really important to test how easy your website is to navigate on multiple different devices. If you are not sure, if you're sort of too close to it and you can't really see it, which often happens with us, we as e-commerce business owners, we are like, of course, everyone knows how to find that thing. And of course, everyone knows how great this product is. And it's so it makes so much sense because it's how I, I designed it and it's my filing system. And so everyone should just instantly understand it. And it's not always the case. It might seem logical to us, but maybe not to other people. So it's really great to then have someone, have a friend, a family member, someone that's not particularly computer savvy and give them a 100% discount voucher code for your site to go on and make a purchase and see how that experience was for them. You can then just refund it and don't ship it. Uh, But having someone else go through it and give you feedback around where the navigation might be a bit tricky and a bit complicated because the number, the more clicks, uh, the, the higher number of clicks we have people make to get to where the checkout, the higher percentage of people that actually drop off and leave the website. Okay, so then that brings us to killer product pages, including great photos and videos, if you can get them product descriptions, size guides, details around fabrication, all of the information a customer needs on the product page in order to go ahead and purchase from you. This includes refund policy, shipping information, including timeframes and costs. We need to have that on the product page. We do not want to have people having to find something that they like and then not know what the refund policy is, how much it costs to ship, how long it's gonna take to arrive, where they then have to go and click down in the bottom of the footer to try and find that information, which then takes them to another page and then it's very difficult for them to go back to the product page and it doesn't make a great experience and the likelihood of them just giving up and closing the website is quite high. So we need to make sure that those product pages are really, really strong and contain all of that information that they need right there on that page without having to click off in other different parts. Also, we need to consider the number of photos and videos that we load. I often see people, I look at many, many websites every every day in, um, in my coaching programs and we'll see that they have got two grainy images of, let's say, a dress. There's no close up, there's no uh, video, there's just a front and back and it's quite grainy because they've got those images from the wholesaler where they bought the products from and they've just uploaded them. And I will say to them, is that enough? Are they enough, those photos enough for you to confidently go ahead and think, "Mm, I'm going to purchase this dress, that's going to be great. And often they're like, "Mm, yeah, no, I didn't actually think about it like that because again, As the business owner, we have seen the stock. We have it in our warehouse, in our garage, in our bedroom. We can touch and feel it and see it, but customers can't. All we have available to us to display those goods is good quality photos and videos. And they don't have to be professional photos, although I do recognize recommend uh, professional photos Uh, but even videos if you can get videos to complement the professional photos that you've got on on your product pages that will show people how the product moves particularly if we're talking about fashion how it flows how it sits Uh, you know have having just someone a vertical video having someone walk towards the camera or even just spin around in the garment will help answer so many questions for a customer that is thinking about adding to cart but might not really be that that confident it will help overcome so many questions and objections that they might have so it's really really important to do that and I know like I said if you are 
purchasing from a wholesaler that you often just grab their photos but sometimes you're going to have to get more you're going to have to take some you more and yes that will cut into your profit margins if you pay someone to do it but it'll also help you sell the thing and increase your conversion rate on your online store so that is four elements so far of a winning website which brings us to number five FOMO apps, i.e. just purchase those little pop-ups that come up and say, so-and-so just bought this thing. Or when they go to the product page, only three of these remain. Creating that scarcity and that fear of missing out in order to help people make a decision quickly and purchase it right away versus thinking that there's 10,000 of them and they'll come back again later, even if there is 10,000 of them. We want to be able to create some sort of scarcity and urgency on our website to have people add it to cart and finish that purchase right away. So there are, I know with Shopify, a number of different apps that help you do this. And I highly recommend you going and having a look, go and read all of the reviews for the different apps. Some will be free, some will be paid. The paid ones are usually better and will have support. But those kinds of scarcity, urgency, FOMO style apps will significantly help increase your conversion rate, which is why we're in business in the first place. We wanna convert as many browsers into shoppers as possible. Okay, that brings me to number six, and I touched on this already in number four, but quality imagery and videos, not just on the product page, but also on the home page and the About Us page and any other pages that you have on your website. Having high quality product photos and videos is crucial, as well as having some really strong and professional images for your banners on your page. Because if it looks like Uncle Bob took the photo, on his old Polaroid camera, people are going to click off and not buy. They will feel like it looks amateur. This isn't a serious business. Plus the photos and, and uh, videos are probably quite grainy. You need to be able to highlight your products in the best possible light. And remember, you don't, you can't get away with just a front and back or even just a front. You know, if you're selling a hoodie, a hoodie one image of the front of the hoodie on a on a ghost mannequin style shot which is like it's not actually on a body on a person it's on a mannequin with the mannequin cut out of the background isn't going to be enough for people to go ahead and buy you need a number of different images showing the front back and sides and a close-up of the garment and ideally you'll be showing this on a range of different sizes of people not just a stock image i also see a lot of imagery where particularly for for drop shipping companies or or businesses that might do uh, say for example they have a design and then if someone orders it uh, the design gets printed on a shirt and shipped off where they've never bothered to actually order one of those shirts themselves with their design on it and get proper photos so it looks like a digitized kind of fake looking photo you're never going to sell many products using photos like that because it's like this isn't even a real product this is like a cartoon version of it so you have to invest in quality imagery and videos because you don't have the bricks and mortar store you don't have the mannequins in the window to you don't have the opportunity for people to come in and touch and feel and try things on you need to be able to then highlight and sell that product using your quality imagery and videos and your product descriptions and size guides Okay, number seven element of a winning website includes up-to-date links for contact you and access to you know, ideally a live chat bot or a email address where they can email and get in contact and ask questions as well as on social media. Often I will go to someone's site and I'll click on that little IG or Facebook icon at the bottom of the page and it takes me to a dead link. Not great. It's not a great not a great experience, doesn't really evoke trust in the customer. Uh, we also need to make sure that all of the links on our website, as far as contact, anything that the people are going to click often, isn't broken. It's not a 404 page. We need to make sure that people can get in contact with us. They can also go and stalk us on social media if they're not quite ready to purchase from us uh, in order to come back later and, and feel confident and ready to, to purchase. Okay, 
Number eight element of a winning website. It needs to be mobile friendly because 80% of your website visitors will be browsing from their mobile phone. So it's critical that you ensure your website is fully optimized for different size screens and devices and that there's no annoying pop-ups coming up and blocking menu uh, links and things like that on, uh, on from a mobile. You might have some of those FOMO apps that you might need to turn off on a mobile. That 10% on, in, uh, on landing on the website that comes up, I mean, I don't recommend you have it come up instantly anyway. It should be on exit or it should be a timer or a percentage of the page that's been scrolled down before it pops up. But you might need to turn some of those off on a mobile because it's quite annoying on a mobile and they're often ginormous and cover the whole screen. You can do this old school way, testing this on your, pull out your phone, ask for your friend's phone to see what it looks like on a Samsung versus an iPhone, pull out your iPad, pull out your laptop, pull out your desktop and have a look. Otherwise, if you use Google Chrome, I'm just doing this in the background, you can right click and you can hit inspect. Is it a Google Chrome? I don't know. I'll put this in the show notes if I can figure it out why I'm not recording live. Uh, yes, you can. You can uh, right click, uh, you can control, right click and hit inspect in Google Chrome. And then you actually will find that you have a little drop down menu at the top where you can go through and select from iPhone SE, iPhone XR, iPhone 12 Pro, uh, mini airs, all of the things. And you can actually go and see what the website looks like on your computer if someone was viewing from a mobile phone. So mobile friendly, it must be mobile friendly because 80% of your visitors are going to be coming from a mobile. Um, so that is a big chunk of people that you're going to lose as potential customers if your website doesn't work so great on a smaller device. Okay, number nine, lots of payment options. We can't just have PayPal and that's it. You need to be offering credit card plus PayPal uh, because if you're lazy like myself and you're sitting on the couch and you're shopping online and if you, for example, don't have PayPal, it's only credit card. If I have to walk upstairs to get my purse and pull out my credit card and type in the numbers, you've lost me. I'm, I just think, no, it's too hard. Thank you. And we'll, and we'll just abandon that shopping cart. So the more payment options you have the better and I know in Shopify now there is a bunch I think there's everything from Google Pay to Apple Pay to all of the different pays and then you do also have your microfinance type payment options and companies that you can uh, sign up with too things like Stripe not Stripe sorry PayPal and Afterpay um, depending on which country you're in so there are plenty of options available and you want to be able to give your customer as many options as as possible in order for it to be easy for them to give you your money so last element of a winning website is number 10 an opt-in box so I touched on this around not having it pop up immediately when they land on your page because that is the equivalent of walking into a, a boutique and having the sales assistant running up to you at the front door and saying hey can I get your email I want to send you spam for the rest of your life you're just going to scare people away and people just automatically just close those we're on autopilot now we just cancel them and by just it's automatic right we're not we're not ready yet we're not ready to give you our email we're just landing on your page for the very first time i want to have a look around and see if it's for me so make sure that you have some sort of opt-in box but make sure it's not annoying it's not shouting at people the minute that they land on your site and that there is another option if they close that box say for example you're offering free shipping on your first order and they've instantly closed it because it pops up within the first two seconds of landing on your site but then decide that they added something to cart and they'd really quite like that offer now thank you very much that it's available as an opt-in box uh, static on your page somewhere that they can go back and, and and pop in their details there otherwise they might not go ahead with the sale and and exit and then try and come back to your site and wait for that pop-up to come and depending on the app that you're using for that pop-up maybe you've set it that it only displays once every so many days if it doesn't pop back up again they might leave um, so we want to make sure that they can do it some other way and still get that little incentive that you've offered uh, even if they've automatically closed the box straight away so these are 10 elements of a winning website and this is a whole entire week 
that I spend inside of online store success. We break this down in, in, in steps. There's how to videos, tutorials. There is even website audits that happen inside of the program where I go through your website. So what we've touched on today is just scratching the surface or around building a winning website and the formula and the elements that you need in order to convert as many visitors into customers as possible. If you would like more of my help, in making sure that you've got a winning website and also all things digital marketing and increasing your sales on your online store, be sure to pop your name on the wait list for my program, Online Store Success, which is coming back in early August. Uh, I'll pop the notes, the, the link in the show notes below. There's also going to be a heap of different free launch events challenges, webinars, all of the things uh, that you'll, you will be more than welcome to come along and get a bit more of a taste around what it is that I teach and also learn some amazing strategies that you can take away and implement in your business right away. So be sure to pop your name on the wait list. You'll then also be notified when those launch events are open for registration. And I cannot wait to chat with you again next week. Bye for now. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Online Store Success with me, Jodie Minto. If you loved it, please share it with your friends on Instagram and tag me at I am Jodie Minto so I can say thank you. And if you really want to make my day, please go ahead and leave me a review on Apple Podcasts and give me a follow. If you'd like my help in starting or scaling your online store, be sure to check out my free resources and programs at jodieminto.com. Thanks again and... Same time, same place next week. Bye for now.